Right guys, so continuing on our theme of looking at the different tones we can achieve from our instrument, because now you're musical, you're creative, you're expressive, you're geniuses on the kit, right? So we want to find your full potential. So we talked about the, the hi-hat, the different sounds we can get there. We talked about the ride cymbal. And now I want to talk about the snare. So, you know, arguably the most important part of the drum kit. This is incredibly, incredibly expressive. And we're going to use this for most of what we play on the drums. It's, it's very rare that you don't use the snare drum. Which is kind of why it's right there in front of us. You can't really ignore this. Now, there is so much we can do with regards to tuning and the type of head we put on. And that's something for a little bit later. Um, you can go and look at the tuning course on, on the Total Drum website if you want. Um, but th there's a massive, massive amount of variation we can do, we can, uh, we can find there. Also, the, the, sh the snare we use, I mean, if you've been into a music shop or gone onto a, a, a website from a, somewhere that sells drums, you've probably noticed there are a lot of snares on offer. They come in different um, depths, even different diameters. There's lots of different shell materials to use. All of these things affect the sound. So we're not gonna go into that right now. Whatever you've got on your kit, whatever your, your snare head is, however you've tuned it, whatever the shell is, let's just work with that. What I wanna do is talk about how we can um, manipulate the sound of what we've got. Now, you've also got your snare throw on the side. So that will have a lever which engages the snare and disengages the snare. So snare on, snare off. And you've got various different types of mechanisms that will do that, but generally it's just a lever, you pull it off, you push it back on. But you've also got the dial that you can twist in or out and that affects how tight the snare, the actual snare strands are underneath that will also affect the sound and the tone of the drum. If they're too tight, it'll just choke it, it'll stifle the sound. If they're too baggy and loose, it'll just be a messy sound. But there's, there's an area between that that you can tweak depending on what effect you want, how much snare buzz you want. So that's worth tweaking around with as well, but that's for another video. So right now I just wanna look at the snare sound. Now, if you hit the middle of the snare, you're gonna get the fattest, fullest sound. As you get out towards the edge, it gets thinner and more high pitched. So let me just play notes from the middle out to the edge and back in so you can get a sense of that, that change. Okay, massive tonal variations there and pitch variations as well. Um, and you can even like push your finger in to bend the tone a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. But I'll do the snares off. So you can affect it like that if you want to. And you've probably seen people putting various things on the snare. You can, you can place stuff on top of it to affect the tone as well. It's just so much. All right, but as I say, we're just gonna muck around with what we can do here. Now, as well as those tonal differences there, we can also do rim shots. Um, and I use these a lot. I don't so much use the rim shot where you hit the middle of the drum, although I sometimes do use that, but that's, that's more just for that big accent, that big effect. But what I'll often use is more a, a, a rim shot where I play across onto the edge, so we get more of a high pitch sound. This, this is more of a kind of timbale sound. So I use this in reggae and Latin music. If I'm playing anything Cuban, or like I say, it, it does work well for reggae. It just kind of mimics that sound that you might get in those genres. So that would be like this. So that's a really cool effect that you should try. I mean, that could be cool in a feel. So let me just play a beat and then I'll do that kind of feel. So that can be fun to use in the right place. So, you know, it, it, it all depends on what you're playing. If you're playing a big rock song, you might want to be getting in the middle of the snare to get the fattest tone. But for funk, you might want to come slightly off centre or even to the edge. Now, a trick I sometimes use is I might play a verse closer to the edge, maybe even with rim shots, so it's a thinner sound. Then when I kick into the chorus, I might go to the middle of the snare, 
So it just lifts it a bit. Without me having to get louder, it kind of just sounds bigger. Let me show you. So you can, you can hear how that gives a different effect as well. So there's loads of ways we can use this. So what I'm just gonna do now, I'm gonna play around a little bit. I'm gonna do some beats, I'm gonna do some fills. I'm gonna take the snares off. I'm gonna put them on, I'll do some rim shots. I'm just gonna explore the sounds of the drums. As I say, I mean, you can play on the rims if you want a kind of cascara sound, again, from Cuban music. We can mess around with the tension of the snares, the tuning of the drum head itself, the thickness of the drum skin that we put on there we can change the snare up for different shells. All that stuff I mentioned at the beginning. So there's so much to consider there in, in, in your snare sound. I use loads of different snares to do the right, to, to basically to achieve the right sound for the right job. Okay, so different songs might require a different snare. Um, in the beginning, what you want to try and do is find something really versatile that you can tweak to, to make it do the job no matter what you're playing until you can save up to buy lots of snares and get obsessed and, and waste all your money and get in debt. Um, like the rest of us do, but um, in the beginning, you want one good snare that will do as much as possible, and then it's trying to eke out all the different sounds you can get by using techniques like this. Um, also, just adding things like moon gel or other dampening things, you can get O-rings around the edge. Um, big fat snare drum's quite popular at the moment, that's another product that sits on top and lowers the pitch of your drum, but also makes it sound fatter. So there's a lot you can do to a snare without having to change the tune in all the head. So getting familiar with all this stuff, experimenting, will, will really pay off later down the line. Your mission is to just have some fun, explore the whole drum. I know we learn to play in the middle of it when we're playing our grooves. I want you now to explore the whole drum, get creative, see what you can do. I'm just going to play out doing the same thing myself. <laughs>